Tailor of the Nazis Hugo Ferdinand Boss was born in Germany in 1885. He fought in World War I and upon returning, took over his family's textile shop in a village near Stuttgart. At that time, it was a relatively successful small society employing nearly 30 workers, but it was still far from being the renowned fashion brand it would later become. He started modestly by producing shirts and jackets, then work clothes, sportswear, and raincoats. At that time, following the end of the war in 1918, Germany was enduring the harsh conditions imposed by the Allies for being the nation officially responsible for initiating World War I. Germany was sinking into economic ruin due to the heavy taxes it had to pay to the victorious side for war reparations. This situation, coupled with the Great Depression of 1929, left Germany in dire straits. Due to Germany's economic situation at that time, Boss was forced to declare bankruptcy. In 1931, he reached an agreement with his creditors, leaving him with six sewing machines to start anew. In that same year, Hugo joined the Nazi Party, and later received an offer to manufacture uniforms for the Nazi Party. He became one of the thousands who carried their Nazi Party membership card, which experienced an explosive growth in the early 1930s. Although he claimed in an advertisement from 1934 to 35 that he had been a supplier of Nazi uniforms since 1924, it is likely that he did not start supplying them until at least 1928. That year, he became an authorized supplier of uniforms for the Sturmetilling SA, Schutzstaffel SS, Hitler Youth, National Socialist Motor Corps, and other party organizations. In 1938, the company focused on producing uniforms for the Wehrmacht and later uniforms for the Waffen SS. The iconic all black SS uniforms, manufactured by Boss, were not designed by the company, but were designed by Karl Dybich and Walter Heck. However, when World War II broke out in 1939, the demand for uniforms increased significantly. Hundreds of thousands of new uniforms were needed, and the factories couldn't keep up, prompting Boss to hire hundreds of employees who did not always come voluntarily to their jobs. The tailor used about 200 prisoners from the Nazi regime as slave labor, which is why it is not surprising that various testimonies place the tailor as a fervent supporter of Nazism and Adolf Hitler, with whom it is said he had a photograph. Everything changed with the end of the war and the German defeat. As an activist, supporter, and beneficiary of Nazism, Hugo Boss had to face a fine of 100,000 francs, which is equivalent to more than 1 million euros today. In addition, the expropriation of his business and voting rights was decreed. However, this decision was revoked after an appeal that resulted in Boss being classified as just another follower of Nazism, which reduced the severity of his sentence. In any case, Hugo Boss stepped down as the company's director and died two years later. After his death in 1948, the company resumed making uniforms, but this time only for police officers and mail carriers. The first suits of the Hugo Boss brand were produced in the 1950s. In 1967, Hugo Boss's nephews, Yves and Jokin, took over the company's management and slowly guided it toward luxury items for the mail market. According to German historian Henning Kober, the company's directors were fervent National Socialists and all of them were great admirers of Adolf Hitler. In 1945, Hugo Boss had a photograph in his apartment of himself with Hitler, taken at the Berghof, Hitler's retreat in Obersalzburg. In 1946, during the German denazification process, Boss was labeled as an activist, supporter, and beneficiary of National Socialism. He was heavily fined, stripped of his voting rights, and banned from running a business. 
However, the ruling was appealed, and Boss was reclassified as a follower, a category with a less severe punishment. In 1999, American lawyers acting on behalf of Holocaust survivors initiated legal proceedings against the Hugo Boss Company for the use of slave labor during the war. The company agreed to contribute to a fund that compensated former forced laborers. In 2011, the company commissioned a report from researcher Roman Coaster, which was published along with a statement of deep regret for those who suffered harm or difficulties in the factory run by Hugo Boss under the Nazi government. The current company, which commissioned the study of its past, no longer has any connection to the Boss family.